Hi everyone, it's Johnny Seed here again, and today I'm going to have a go at cleaning a VHS tape uh, that's got mould on it. Now, I'm going to put a disclaimer out right at the beginning. Uh, this is not intended to be an instructional video, because I've never done this before. <laughs> uh, I've watched uh, a few videos online, um, and I'm going to try out a couple of different techniques. The, the, the roughly similar techniques are slightly different variant variations. Uh, I'm just going to see which one works better, and whether uh, uh, a complete amateur like me can, can do it. Um, so yeah, so don't take this as a instructional video, uh, this is more of a uh, testing of the techniques. Okay, so, um, so yeah, my intention is I've got um, quite a lot of VHS tapes left which I want to digitise and I don't want them to put them through my good machine uh, if they've got any mould on them. Now, um, I've read up on this and there's different uh, opinions on whether or not you really should try and clean your own tapes. Some people think that it's not worth trying at all. Some people think, yes, it's perfectly fine. Um, some people have got a problem with the mold. Uh, so I'd say that if you have respiratory problems or you live in a submarine, uh, a non -well, <laughs> an unventilated area, you might not want to uh, consider this. Um, however, the, the amounts of mold I'm going to be dealing with in a minute are minuscule. So I think um, it shouldn't be an issue really. Um, right, I'll show you one of the tapes. Uh, so this is the this is the tape that I really want to do first. Um, this is a this is a tape of my old band, Doctor Bone. Um, so it's something I want to keep. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's on here. So I want to digitise this. I want to put this on the computer. But if you can see, uh, it's got white mouldy splotches on. So um, this is going to be the tape that I want to clean. However, because I've never done this before, I'm going to do a trail run. Uh, I managed to find another tape. I went through all my tapes and luckily uh, only two or three of them had, had mould on them. I think that one, that Dr. Bone was probably the worst. Uh, now this one has got a tiny bit of mould. I don't know if you can just about see that there by the wheel. Um, but this is a tape that I'm not that fussed about. It's got the film's Mind Killer and Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires on it. Um, you know, Seven Golden Vampires is a good film, good laugh. Uh, however, I'm not that fussed about the cassette, so uh, if it all goes wrong, I, I haven't lost anything that's irretrievable. Um, so, yeah, the, so the two methods we're going to use uh, both involve cleaning the tape with isopropyl alcohol. Um, and every time I say that word, I always want to sing it as in isopropyl. Oh, <laughs> Dr. Fields, okay. Um, I'll probably cut that bit out. Um, okay, and so you're going to be using isopropyl alcohol, and we're also going to be using a old VHS machine, um, which I will cut to some footage of now, which I'm going to film with my other camera as we're talking. Um, I'm just going to put in the light on, so I have to excuse whether... Whoops, there you go. Because on Halloween. Right, so what I've got here is an old VHS machine. Uh, it's a Sony one. Uh, it would have been a good machine back in its uh, original form. However, I bought this off a car boot sale without being able to test it for a fiver about two years ago. And it doesn't work. Well, it, it works mechanically, but the, it doesn't play in colour and there is a lot of interference. So I think it's the, a problem with the head or something. Like I say, I'm not an expert. So this isn't plugged in at the moment. There's a plug. And so I'm going to have to do a obligatory, uh, a necessary safety warning. Do not, do not piss about with plugged in electronics. <laughs> okay. So basically, what you don't want to do is you want to avoid touching or licking anything in this area here where the plug goes in. This is where all the power goes, and that's the dangerous part. Uh, so, I mean, we're going to consider this all to be dangerous. I won't be touching anything while it's plugged in. Uh, I'll show you in a bit what we're actually going to do. Um, the two methods, roughly speaking, involve one, using a swab like this, which I'll uh, explain more about later. And it's just a case of pushing it next to the tape as it runs through. The tape's going to run through this part here. And the second part is going to use some cotton uh, pads wrapped around one of these little spools here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around the spool uh, before I plug the machine in so that when the machine is plugged in, I won't have to touch anything. It can all just do its own thing, okay? So, bear that in mind, please. 
Right, um, turn off that horror lighting. Okay, so yeah, two different methods. One of them is going to involve this. Uh, I'll just cut some footage of me making this. This is literally just three cotton buds uh, with some microfiber cloth wrapped around and elastic band. I'm going to use this as a swab. We're going to put the isopropyl alcohol on here and then as the tape goes through the machine, we're just going to hold this against the tape and the idea is that's going to clean some of the tape off. Right, so I'm just going to construct the the swab. Uh, I have to excuse the the angle and the, the shadow. So I've got a patch of microfiber cloth, not so big, which I just cut out of a towel, a couple of lucky bands, and whoops. <clears throat> I'm going to, oops, I'm going to destroy everything. I'm going to use one, two, three of these cotton buds Q-tips. And I'm just going to wrap that around. Thusly. And attach the elastic band. I'm sure you get the idea. And there we have one swab. All right, and the second method is going to involve Wrap, soaking, well, just dampening a cotton pad like this. Um, these things come apart so you can get it thinner. I'm going to wrap that around one of the spindles in the machine and that's going to do the same sort of thing, but I'm not going to be holding it. So that's the only variation really. And then after that, the scary part, uh, we have to take the tape apart and then clean inside uh, with more, more cotton buds. So, uh, yeah, so shall we have a go? <laughs> I think I will try the whoops. I will try the swab method first. So uh, let's do it. Right. Okay. So um, I need two hands for this. So I'm going to use this uh, camera on a tripod here. Hello. Um, <laughs> now, so what I've just done is I've just poured some of the isopropyl alcohol onto this cotton swab. Sorry, not cotton. Onto this microfiber swab here. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove any of the excess because you don't want this to be wet. Because if it's going to be wet, then there's a good chance it's going to make the tapes stick to the head as it goes round. And that's the last thing you want to happen because it will mean the tape will be ruined and chewed up. So it needs to be just damp apparently. I think that's maybe a bit too damp. So I'm just going to squeeze a bit more off. Okay. Right, it feels wet, there's nothing, nothing coming out. Right, so I've got the window open. Um, I want to do this in a ventilated area, like I said, if you've got any breathing problems, you might want to wear a mask. If you've got problems with mold, if you're not happy about the idea, but personally, I don't think uh, the amount of mold we're going to be using, dealing with here is going to be an issue. Uh, if you've got a tape that's completely moldy, that's like completely covered in white, or across, and you might want to just consider how valuable that tape is to you. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if they still do, I know they used to have professional tape cleaning services, I'm not sure whether they still exist, um, but I'll have a look and if I can find any I'll put some links. But yeah, so, right. Okay, so here's our cassette going in. tape should come out and go around the head part there. So we have a little bit of a gap here where I can reach. I'm just going to rest my hand on the side here, not touching anything metallic. And just so it's touching, and I'll do it that way around. Just so it's touching the tape. Now as I, when I go to fast forward, the tape should tighten up a little bit. So I'm going to need two hands. So. making some uncomfortable sounding noises. Making a terrifying noise. Whoops. Okay.
Okay, so uh, I don't know if you can tell, but there's definitely less mould now on this side here. It's always wound all the way through to the side, but I can still see bits of mould in here. So we still need to do the opening up the tape and cleaning it manually. Right, I'm going to do the second method now involving the uh, pad. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of isopropyl on there. Uh, maybe put a little bit more on so it covers a bit more. Okay. So that should soak through. And the idea is now the uh, machine is now unplugged, so there's no, no power. I'm going to try and get it to wrap around one of these pegs. So, I can feel the damp side is there. And hopefully, putting something around this peg is not going to uh, cause any problems. Okay, I've got one more tape. Now, this has only got a tiny little bit of mold on, but I'm going to clean it anyway because it's only ever going to get worse. Um, and if you're curious, this had Dennis Leary's Nokia for cancer on it. <laughs> And the 30 years of Top of the Pops. So, here goes. I'm going to put this in now. And hopefully it's not going to destroy the cassette. Oh. I haven't. I didn't plug it in. Okay, that's fitting quite snugly around the tape. Now my worry is whether or not it's now too tight for it to uh, properly play. It's moving, it's going around. Let's see what happens when we go fast forward, shall we? It's just... Nope. Doesn't seem to want to fast forward. Okay, that's a concern. Yeah, it's struggling to move around. Okay, I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to inject the tape. I'm going to try a thinner. Not the sound we want to hear. Stop making horrible noises now. Uh, let's adjust it. Chip. Right, it's not happy about this for some reason. I'm just going to try and figure out what is preventing the tape from coming out. It doesn't seem to want to come out. I'm going to stop filming now just while I figure out what, what the issue is here. Okay, I managed to get the tape out. Um, I had to switch it off at the mains just as it got to the point where the tape lift up because it wasn't releasing it. So I don't know whether that's an issue with the machine or the cassette. Uh, however, um, I do have another machine which we can possibly use. So I might just go and get that one. Okay, so we're back now with machine number two. Um, <laughs> this is a, a Bush VHS player. Uh, hopefully um, there's no mechanical issues with this one. I uh, can't remember what's wrong with this. I, don't, I just think it doesn't, there's no picture anymore for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I'm guessing something's come loose somewhere. But Anyway, uh, I'm going to use it as a, uh, a cleaning machine now. So, I need to find a, a suitable pen. Okay, the lights have come on, there's no smoke coming out from anywhere. Tape going in. Right, so, we well, looks like we have a machine that's going to uh, 
inject the tape. <laughs> right, so uh, I'll just uh, have to re-prepare the swab and find a suitable place to put it on. Not forgetting to turn the thing off first. Right, so I've got a pad now and I'm just going to try and dampen it off. Dry it off a little bit with some tissue. Don't know if you can see on here, there's two, three little spindly things here and they're very close together so I'm going to make this thinner and see if that works. I don't know whether this is actually going to accept the tape because that just might be in the way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the, the sacrificial tape first. Okay, it's accepted it. It's not freaked out about the cotton swab pad being there. Right, this might take a minute. I'll just uh, come back when it gets to the end. Okay, so it's gone all the way to the end now. I'm just going to inject it and have a look at the tape. Right, so I can't see anything on this side where the mould was. Sorry, the lighting is terrible. Right, so I'm going to try it with the uh, the tape that I want to digitise now. So I'm fairly happy that it's not going to destroy it. So I've still got the pad in there from before, but I'm going to also use the, the swab, which I have just put some more isoprope on. Don't want to get any fluff anywhere. And so what I think I'll do is, yeah, see, I can see a little bit of, there. Um, so I'm going to fast forward the tape and I'm just going to put it against here, this part. I can just feel the tape vibrating the swab. So I'm not pushing on it too much but enough for it to kind of just feel, I feel vibrating so it's definitely touching. Okay, so the tape is not destroyed. <laughs> and now comes the fun part. Right, I didn't realise how bad the line was in here. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to go back into the room and uh, I'm going to try and open up all these cassettes so that we can uh, clean the insides. Okay, so I've moved into the other room now and we're going to try and open up this cassette and uh, we're using a few cotton buds. I'm going to clean the, uh, see the white part there? I'm going to clean that. And the idea is then that you put it back together, uh, you put it back in the machine and you rewind it cleaning it as you go and then do the other side so now I've uh, I have opened up cassettes before um, VHS tapes and I've successfully managed to transfer the spools from a broken cassette into a uh, cassette case into a fresh one however uh, I've also managed to screw it up before and <laughs> make a complete disaster of it so this is the bit I'm not really looking forward to however um, I will uh, give it a go and hopefully not um, destroy the tape Right, so the first thing we have to do is remove this label um, because that's going to get in the way. So I can see there's a bit of a seam here. So I'm just going to score along there. And hopefully that shouldn't get too much in the way when we have to split the tape open. Right, so on the back we have one, two, three, four, five screws. So now you can uh, watch me struggle to <laughs> get these screws out. And I got a micro mini screwdriver. Right, so we have the screws out, 
and we'll just put them somewhere safe over there. Right, so now this is the part where, um, yes, this is the part I'm <laughs> not looking forward to. So I'm going to have to flip this over to its front, and then there's a little peg here. You can open up the flap there, and then in theory, this should just lift off. There we go. Okay, so it's come off. Now be careful, there is a spring in here. I don't know if you can see it just there. Uh, which you don't want to ping out because that'll be a nightmare to get back in. So I'm going to put that somewhere safe. Right, so I can actually see the mould. I can see something white anywhere on the bottom of here. Now I've seen other videos where they take the tape out and clean it that way. Now I'm really reluctant to do that because as you can see these little white uh, tube things here are what keeping the tape in place. They just lift out so it's very easy and there's like a little flap thing here. And these bits here are a nightmare to get back in. They're like sp the spring things that keep the tape um, taut, I guess. I don't know. I'm not an expert. Um, so I'm going to try and clean sort of going in from the side here. All right. <clears throat> so we have our isopropanol. Isopropanol. Which just smell like really cheap, uh, really cheap vodka or gin. Um, but do not drink, <laughs> even with tonic. Um, at the very best, you'll go blind, and at worst, you'll go dead. So. so I've just poured out a little little nip of uh, alcohol into the lid. So I'm going to use to dip that in. I'll just get rid of any excess fluff. And hopefully I can clean this without moving things around. So this should kill off any of the mould. Um, I'm not suggesting this is going to be a permanent solution. Um, if you have mouldy tapes that are your own, you might want to have a look at where they've been stored and uh, silica gel. You know those little packets of silica gel you get when you buy electronic equipment. Grab yourself some of those and wherever you're keeping your cassettes, chuck a load of those in with them. If they come in clamshell boxes, then uh, chuck a silica pack into the clamshell box and it should be all right. So out of Maybe 30, 40 tapes that I've got. I think I've only got four or five which has got any moulding at all. So, I don't know why some have and some haven't. Some tapes are older than others. Now you can see I'm getting a bit close to the, the actual tape there. So I'm going to have to be a bit more careful. I don't want to really move this. I'm a bit reluctant to lift it out. Okay, so you get the gist. Uh, I'm going to carry on doing this now. Um, once I've done this one, I'm going to leave it to dry actually. I'm not going to put it straight back in the machine because I'm probably putting more... It's still a little bit wet in there. So I'll maybe leave it for half an hour before I whiz it back through the, the VHS player. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to say is I'm also going to clean around the actual rest of the tape, these parts here. Just so though in case there's any, uh, any spores which I uh, can't actually see. So yeah, clean the whole tape, and uh, don't forget the inside of the lid as well. You can see there's some flecks of mould on here. Okay, so I have now successfully uh, cleaned both sides of the tape, um, and it's now mould free, as much as it can be anyway. Um, yes, this is not a, a permanent solution. Um, if your tape's going mouldy, like I said, you might want to look at why they're going mouldy. And I would only recommend this if you're going to be digitising them. Um, I would, if, you go, if it's a tape that you want to keep forever, if it's worth something, then maybe get it done professionally. Um, so yeah, just to recap, what you do is you put it in the machine one way, fast forward it all the way to the end until you've got a clear. So it's all fast forwarded all the way to the end. And then you clean the inside that bit, then you rewind, repeat. And so this bit's, this side's clear, and then you can clean the inside of that. And you should be good to go then. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you this. Uh, once I've cleaned the kept tapes, I'm going to uh, transfer them onto my computer using one of these. Uh, it's an Applic, a USB 
uh, audio video grabber. Uh, I paid £17 for it, but I bought it last year, well in December 2017. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's got a USB on one end and these go into the back of your VCR. And it's really simple, you just plug it in and install the software and it's uh, pretty straightforward. It, now it uh, doesn't need to be HD, that's the thing, that's probably why it's uh, a bit cheaper. You're only going to be capturing VHS quality, so don't worry about getting anything that's 1080p or anything like that. And to capture things, I uh, picked up a VHS player. Let's move the lamp around. Uh, yeah, this was a tenner from a charity shop, the British Heart Foundation one. So yeah, now's the time to pick up a VHS player. Uh, if you've got any tapes lying around which you've been meaning to uh, transfer, you can get them really cheap now, but I don't think they make them anymore, so they won't be cheap forever. Okay, thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if um, you managed to clean some tapes. And let me know if you managed to destroy any tapes. <laughs> I'll put some links below to the uh, original tutorials that I watched. Um, and you can see them as well. Okay. Um, right. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.